Today we're going to talk about the Zalmex MiG-27. I went to Big Fun this morning and found two vintage 80s Zalmex airplanes and one of them was this camouflage Tomcat which is super cool. It's in great shape. The wings up here, a little paint's a little chipped, but overall it's in great shape. It's got its windshield and it's super important. But what I also got was a MiG-27. And I've always had one in my collection and uh, now I have two, but they are identical. They both have the same uh, machined metal wheels, the same plastic canopy, the same paint job, and the markings are the same. And this is probably the fewest markings I've seen in an airplane. Here's the mold marking, A111. And here's the model of the airplane, MiG-27. So there's no China marking, no Zalmex marking, unless there's something under these bombs, which I would have to get one that has these removed, but I don't think there is anything under there. I don't see anything. But it's the, there's very few sweep wing aircraft in, in the Zalmex lineup. And these two are very unique. And they're the only two that sweep in this fashion on top of the body of the aircraft, which is not, of course, how the actual airplane works. Um, you know, they sweep inside. There, there are three others that I can think of off the top of my head. The B-1 bomber, which I've never done a video about. But the F-111, uh, Raven and uh, the Tornado are all sweep wing aircraft and of course the modern Tomcats they all sweep inside the body but the old Tomcat and this MiG-27 are, are very unique in this in this way and uh, it's one of the things that I really love about the Tomcat design because you don't see that in any other die cast model from any other company anywhere so it's um you know it's a, it's just a cool indicator but one thing that i i have noticed is that uh, the manufacturing quality sometimes the way that the bombs are stamped on uh, or sometimes the way the paint job is done uh, you know they're less than than um, than quality and this is is uh uh, another indication of poor manufacturing quality. It's easy to assume that this may have happened just from rough play, but I see a lot of wheels that are like this. So much so that there's a whole generation of these Zalmex toys where the some of the landing gear are just crushed. And I think this is the result of... Um, the tool that was used oh, got out of focus there. the tool that was used to to crimp these little fingers around the landing gear axle the employee was just too aggressive with it whether it be a, a table mounted tool or an automated tool or a hand tool uh, either way it, someone was just too aggressive with it and when we look at this old airplane that I've had in my collection for a long time, <laughs> we see the same indicator. So obviously that was a that was a trend. It was something that was the result of manufacturing. But these little MIGs are really cool. I, I was always disappointed it only had one rear wing <laughs> but that that it wouldn't be a mig I guess this dark gray finish with 
the red stars and a number 10 sticker on the side. It's hard to see the, the nose number on the side. Uh, but this is the earliest variation of this casting in the earliest variation of its packaging style. This came out in 1980. By 1983, we see the camouflage version uh, that we have here in our collection. I was unsure for a while if there were any other variations on this casting, uh, maybe foreign. And uh, so I did some research on the internet and came upon this picture uh, that is very telling. Uh, I have not been able to contact the person who took, took this picture. Uh, the person who owned this collection apparently was trying to get rid of it. And it's hard to say what has happened to it now, but uh, we see a variation in here that could be, uh, it's really hard to tell what this is, but this may be a silver variation of uh, the, the MiG-27 of the first casting with the dark gray finish and the red uh, stars on it, because that's what this looks like. It looks like that same deco with just a silver finish. Uh, but without better pictures, it's really hard to say. However, over here to the right, we do see that there is a different variation on the camouflage. The colors seem to be identical, uh, but it looks like the, the way in which the paint was applied, uh, the, the brown overcoat, uh, the camouflage portion was just done in a in a radically different way, uh, a variation I've never had the opportunity to purchase. I've never seen this online. So these are two variations I've never seen. And quite honestly, uh, in this picture, there's a lot of variations of different castings that I've never seen, period. So uh, certainly he, uh, this individual lives in an area where th they had access to variations that we've just never seen here in America. Thanks for watching people. Make it a great day. Okapudu Pustakalo Chadukuna Mig twenty seven Vimanam, Tamuri Kravadanto, Yutanta Kushia Tunaru, Vimana and the Chusi Murisipotunaru, Hasalu Jivitan Lo Chus Tamu Ledo Ankunamani, Alanti Kalan Derever in the Niantunaru. Or Meniska Barme both goes both goes Susunata. सुना था कि आवाज कैसी है और दिखता कैसे है और नेट नेट पे भी मैंने बहुत सारे फोटोज देखे थे पर मैंने असली में इसको देखा नहीं था इस और ये राजकोट में आएगा तो तो मुझे बहुत खुशी है कि ये यहां राजकोट में आ रहा है हम जब छोटे थे